Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're working on the low poly anime female character. In this session we're getting ready for the texturing. So we're tidying up the face and just moving things into areas where we need a different face color. Now this is all part of a series so make sure you've checked out the playlist in the description. There's also lots of playlists with free courses on my channel. If you like what I do then I've got a paid for character course which is very detailed with a sculpting workflow going from nothing to a detailed character that moves around in a game engine. And that's all from a beginner's perspective. So here's where we got up to last time. And we'll start with the face and editing that so we can color it in nice and easily. I'll go to front view and wireframe and bring back my reference images. I'll zoom into the face section and you can see how I've drawn an eye shape around the eye. Now there's several ways of adding color to your model and the low poly way is to actually paint the faces. You could easily take this file, unwrap it and paint on it which would give you a much more detailed result, but we're trying to keep things as simple as possible here. So with your knife tool with K, we can start mapping out the eyebrow and I'll actually make it come up here slightly and down here slightly and then press enter and I'll just move some of these into position that need to be moved. I'll put another cut down here, two to go to edge mode, select that edge, right click subdivide back to vertex mode and then I've got an extra vertex and I can just move that so it follows the curve of the eye a little bit better. So somewhere around there, we've also got the iris here, so K and I'll come around from the top about here. Wherever you hit an edge, then use that edge to around there and K for the pupil. Now I'm probably gonna get lots of comments about triangles, polygons and so forth, bad topology. This is a nice simple way of doing it, it gives you okay results. It's not great topology. We're not gonna animate the eye in any way. And you can easily tidy this up without too many issues. I'm noticing the nose is a little high, so I'll select that and G to grab and pull that down into this section here and pull that one up. And let's just have a quick look around and that's fine. You'll probably want to tidy up a little bit by flattening this area out. Okay, let's go to solid mode now and just do a bit of tidying up, a bit of housekeeping. So big end gons might cause us problems, especially when we try and flatten this out. So end gons are anything with more than four sides, as you can see around here. And this one's particularly awkward here, especially ones that cut in on itself like this. Again, it doesn't actually cause any big issues because the mesh is triangulated when it's rendered. The only thing is you can't tell exactly what it's going to do when it's rendering. So sometimes with quads, it does the triangle an unexpected direction. So let's take this quad here you'd expect a triangle just to go across there, but it might end up putting a triangle somewhere where you don't expect it, like the other angle. So those are the only real difficulties you're gonna come across. I do think it is best to tidy these things up. So if we go to one for vertex mode, and then we can select some vertices and press J to join, just to smarten everything up a little bit. And you can see how the shape is looking, and therefore you can line vertices up a little bit easier. Where there's no obvious join and you've still got an end gone, you might want to press K to go to the knife tool and cut some new topology in. And there might be some polygons that are quite close to each other that can just be slid together. So GG to edge slide to make sure that you have got the merge vertices option up the top there enabled. Okay, so we can see the shape that's appearing and how it's reacting to the light over here. And you might not be comfortable with that. There's a few dents and things that aren't that appealing. So just go around to the side and have a look and think how you want these things to appear. So G to grab and the Y axis. Try to stick to the Y axis because we've set it all up from the front already. You might find this easy in wireframe mode. and I suggest sort of switching between the two. I think the eye will be best if it's flat, so especially the sort of eyeball section here. So we can select those faces with three, C to circle select to draw our faces with left click, middle mouse button to remove faces and right click to come out of circle select. We can then press S then Y and start scaling that in the Y a little bit. I mean, you might want to keep some of its curve and then maybe G to grab and pull it backwards and rotate if you have to. Okay, so we're seeing that shape and how again it's reacting to the light on the side there. Now you can go as detailed as you like with this section. 
and you might want more detail around the nose so you can just come in and cut around here and change the shape of your nose slightly so when you look at it from the side it sticks out more and so forth. I'm going to undo that because it's a nice simple approach that we're using for our model. I'll just put one more cut across here and one more down here just to turn some areas into quads. In fact I suppose it would make more sense selecting these two and M is to merge now and we'll just merge at the center so not Alt M that it used to be in 2.82. I'll just go to front view and just by eye tidy some of these things up so we've got more sort of circles and curves and things. Okay so that should be fine. The other area that we might need to look at is the belt and perhaps if there's enough call for it I'll put some weapons on this character or we could think about some other clothing perhaps if people are interested. Just quickly go to wireframe. I think it does look better if the belt does protrude from the body slightly but I think when I was testing it that the belt is too large at the moment so I'm just going to click on this edge loop round here with alt left click and gg to edge slide it down just a touch somewhere around there I think then we can select that face loop going around there and alt e extrude along the normals and just move my mouse upward slightly and there we go it's back to solid mode get rid of our references and just see how we're doing and I'll go back to object mode and we can see how the shape's looking and reacting to light. And we're keeping this low poly look, so we're keeping the flat shading. And I think that's working fairly well. So in the next session, we'll be adding some color. Let me know in the comments how you're getting on. You can always join the Discord as well and share your work there. Make sure you at Grant so I can easily find it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.